Well, hey there! You're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink is, uh... Sorry, I had to turn up the lamp. Uh, by Toucan. <laughs> Sorry about that. Of Australia. Uh, it's an Australian brand. And this is, uh, they have two browns. They have one called Umber, uh, which is a bit darker. And then they have Sienna, which is a bit lighter. Now, I've made no secret in the past of my being an Italiophile. I love Italy. Uh, Rome feels more like home than home ever did. It's what I studied all throughout school. I've been lucky enough to go to Siena, uh, I think about five times now. Pretty sure. Yeah, and uh, love Tuscany. And this uh, ink really reminds me of, you know, the terracotta roof tiles and patio tiles and all that. Uh, so I was really excited to test this ink. Uh, two pens I used were these. Now, you may be looking at this and think, I know what that is, that's a Metropolitan. You would be wrong. This is a Pilot MR. Got this actually in Rome a couple years ago. Now, it is made by Pilot, so this medium nib is more like a Western fine, but let me show you what makes it an MR. Standard International, which is great, because one time I walked into, actually it was the same pen shop, I walked into this pen shop and brought a pilot cartridge to ask if they had any more, and they were fascinated by the marble in the bottom, and they were like passing it around being like, oh, look. <laughs> Now, I could tell pretty quickly they didn't have any uh, pilot converters or cartridges, but anyways. Other pen I used was this. This is a Italics Parsons Essential, and this is a broad cursive italic stub. And generally, my Italics uh, pens, pretty much all of them, tend to be a little dry. So, yeah, I thought this would... And then the stub nib, the edge of this stub, uh, I don't know if you guys know this or notice this, but that very straight edge on the stub, when it runs across the paper, it almost acts like a, uh, like a, think of it like a windshield wiper. It like pulls the ink along, so it can leave a very dry line in its wake. So generally I do use, uh, like in this situation, the, what I would use on the cheaper papers inherently would be this one because it would be a bit more gentle because um, it would leave such a dry line in its wake. So yeah. All right, so let's check out the comparisons. Here's Toucan Sienna. And then under that, I've got Noodler's Antietam. As you can see, it's a bit more red and a bit more shading. Uh, this one's a bit more of a sort of a dusty tan orange. Now here is Diamine's 150th anniversary Terracotta, which you can see is very similar. But again, uh, not as much as Antietam where it's more red. This one's a bit more brown and got more of a dustiness to it, and I really enjoyed this one again because I, you know, I love, you know, makes me homesick for Italy. Uh, so yeah, throughout the test you're going to see little comparisons between these two pens. Uh, next up, and I know this is going to seem kind of like a crazy comparison, because this is one of the uh, Shimmertastic inks by Diamine. This is Brandy Dazzle, so yes, this has it looks like a glitter bomb went off in it, but if you sort of hold it at the right angle so that you ignore the glitter, because, okay, in these, the glitter, when you see it in the vial, the glitter all settles to the bottom. And I feel like if I could sort of stick the syringe in and just take the ink from the top after the, gl after the glitter settled, I would actually find something quite similar. So that's why I included that. And here's KWZ of Poland's Flame Red, which again is more red, but there are parts of it that are kind of similar, so yeah, there you go, there's comparisons. Now, oh, where did I put the chromatography? Here's the chromatography. All right, mm, use this as a background. Now the one on the left, this one, is where I let it dry. And the one on the right is how you're supposed to do it, which is where you put the line of ink and pretty much instantly drop it in the water. Now, as you can see, you can tell where that initial drop was put, but just barely. And there's almost nothing. And then you go into something that is pretty much a straight orange through here. And then it gets darker and darker and darker until it's pretty much a light brown. And then right up at the top, you see this vibrant blue. This little ring of vibrant blue right up at the top. And now the one where I let it dry, it's pretty much the same, except that the line is a bit darker the sort of empty bits through here are just a little bit darker, but everything's really pretty much the same. 
So yeah, there's that. Now I wanted to see what this ink could stand up to. So here's the water test and actually water got it moving fairly well, but I ended up learning. Uh, but yeah, you can still see the pattern of the ink under the water test, but yeah. And then I hope this will come through because this was weird. This one third bleach solution turned it pink, got rid of it, but the bits that hadn't quite been disposed of yet by the bleach uh, turned a very bright pink. Ammonia pen flush seriously got it moving. But again, I ended up being able to flush this out of my pens just fine with water. Hydrogen peroxide really started to obliterate it, and this almost looks like a moon crater. But yeah, so uh, there's that. Paper test, top down in density, Clairefontaine 90 grams per square meter. Now this is a different kind of Clairefontaine that I've been using lately, but um, yeah. So here's what I mean about, you'll see me compare it to terracotta throughout the test. Now, that little bit at the bottom, that's Diamine's terracotta in actually my Pelican M200 with the italic nib, which is why I compared it with the uh, italics. You can see it's a bit dustier. It's not quite as bright. It's more like sun bleach terracotta, and this is sort of more like the flower pot terracotta, a little young, a little fresh. But yeah, anyway, so that Pilot MR with the Japanese medium took 13 seconds to dry, and the italic Sparsons Essential with a broad crisp italic stub took 19. And as you can probably see from these scrubbies, we actually get some sheen. Where you lay it on thick enough, you get some sheen. And actually, it's here too. You see that? Just a little bit. But there is beautiful shading in this writing. I, I just want you to see this. Beautiful shading. If you like shading, this is just gorgeous. It's very nice. You get a mild halo effect around the writing, which is uh, sort of like that dark outline. It's very nice. Very well behaved. No bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo. All good in that regard. But again, this is this isn't the darkest color ink, and this is still 90 gram paper. And again, you get that halo sheen, but the problem is, and this is something that's going to continue, I can't tell how wet this is, because the more I wrote with it, the wetter it got. Now, I've heard of Private Reserve's tanzanite being called a pen laxative, because it's just, you know, flying through your pen, but this, I have never seen anything like this. This was very strange, and it ended up, I kept it in the pens because I quite enjoyed this color of ink, and I'd say... By the time it sort of like reached its its peak wetness and then settled down, it was almost a 7 out of 10. I don't know if this is common. Um, if you've tried this ink or had an experience like this, please leave a message down below because I'm quite curious now. Now, anyways, onto the water test. As you might be able to tell, something at the center in this medium is still there. If you had to recover that, you could, but it did dye the page. So it did leave a bit of a mess in its wake, and the same can be said this 1.1, or sorry, the broad crisp italic. Now, next up is Fabriano Echo Qua. It is an 85 gram per square meter paper. Uh, it's very quickly becoming my favorite ink to test, or sorry, paper to test on. I can't speak today. Now, that Japanese medium took 17 seconds to dry. This one point, this broad crisp of italic stub, something's wrong with me today, also took 17. And I would just like you to look at how solid the color is on those smears. That is pretty dense color. And then up here in the writing, especially in that stub, I love the way a stub can like pull the ink around and like I said, create some areas of much drier writing, like the top of the L. Great contrast. And again, we have this sheen uh, in the, around the wettest parts and a bit of a halo in the writing. And again, here we see the comparison with Diamine's Terracotta, which I hope you can see is just a little more brown, a little less orange, and a bit dustier. But it also has a little bit of sheen to it. I highly recommend you go and uh, watch that review. Really love that ink. It was quite lovely. But, jeez, just look at this shading. I mean, if you, if you like shading, seriously look at this. And what you're not going to be able to see is that there is a halo of sheen around the edges of the wettest parts of this writing. So like up at the top of this little dark bit in H, top of this, top of this dark bit in the D, the N, the G. So you see just these little flashes of shine all throughout. It's very lovely. 
Very well behaved. No bleed, no feather, no spread. I say maybe there's some echo in the scrubby, but I really don't see it. I don't know. Maybe I was just being particularly harsh that day because I was looking for something to complain about. But again, it kept getting wetter the more I wrote with it. So seriously, note down below if you if you know what's going on here. But yeah, uh, water test again did create a bit of a mess. It did dye the page. But what's at the center is actually more readable than I thought after, you know, looking at the chromatography. So, meh. Meh. Sorry. Next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. And again, you know, it's a uh, blade again, Sam, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we get halo of sheen around the wettest parts. Again, comparison with terracotta. Uh, medium took 12 seconds to dry despite that big old smear. Uh, but I should say that that smear, it was smeared right after I wrote it, so it was like this. It was one, two, three, four, and those took 12 seconds to dry. Uh, the broad curse of italic took 19, but again, we have just such beautiful shading in the writing. It's a lovely color if you like this sort of color. Honestly, if you like light browns, check it out. If you like oranges, check it out. If you like just inks that sheen or, or uh, you know, subtle sheening, not like out of control sheening, check it out. If you like ones that have great shading, check it out. It's, it's, it's great. This, I really enjoyed this ink and it's fairly inexpensive. You do get it in the bag, you know, when you buy it, but honestly, I regret not buying a bag of it when I was at the San Francisco Pen Show, but yeah, that's, that's personal regret. Now, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread. And I said, maybe there's some echo in the scrubbies, but I really don't see it. So, yeah, maybe I was just trying to find something to complain about. But, yeah, water test, it did make a bit of a mess. And oddly, half of each letter is gone in this broad cursive italic, uh, which was weird, but I don't know. I feel like if you were any good at uh, Wheel of Fortune, you could probably figure that out. Now, next up is Tomoe River Paper which is known for drawing out shading and sheen and dry times and echo. But uh, yeah, so first of all, I just want you to get a look at this. Look at this beautiful shading, this great color. I really enjoyed it on this cream paper. It looks just lovely. And then we got this. And again, you can see the sheen in the terracotta too. Ah, man, just great. Just great. Um, but we're still having the problem where the more I write with this ink, the wetter it gets. Like you might be able to tell just from the smear test, like here to here, to here, to here. <laughs> yeah, it just kept getting wetter, but um, it looked real good in the process. And here you can see, I think, yeah, the halo of sheen around the wettest parts. But yeah, anyways, the, <laughs> the Japanese medium took 19 seconds. The broad curse metallic took 22. Oh my god, this color, everything, just so lovely. So lovely. There's no bleed, no feather, no spread. There might be some echo. Yeah, okay, that's me. I was laying it on so thick. So thick in the scrubby, trying to ensure that I would get some sheen. Not knowing yet that I wouldn't have to, because sometimes it is hard to get on camera. But look, this bit with the Japanese, me uh, Japanese medium, there is no echo. Um, maybe where I laid it on really thick with that broad crisp metallic. Maybe. I don't know, maybe you're really sensitive to it, but I'm saying maybe, and I do consider myself sensitive to it. Now this paper loves to let ink slide away when you add more water. It kind of did, but honestly, I was expecting worse. Now, it is much lighter, parts of it are gone, but I was expecting this to just be a blank sheet. And it didn't dye the page as much as I thought it was going to, but yeah, so definitely not the easiest thing in the world. It would definitely be a challenge, but I don't know. Might be possible. Now for the next three tests, I, as I said at the beginning, I used the Parsons Essential, uh, which is a broad crisp metallic stub, but generally mine tend to be pretty dry. And because of that edge on the stub, it tends to sort of, you know, like a squeegee again, it tends to like draw the ink in a direction, keep it from, you know, so I usually that's the more fair option. But again, this ink was just getting wetter and wetter the more I used it. So I don't know how fair it ended up being. Oops, sorry. 
Now, as you can probably tell, there is spread. So the line width actually got even broader. A lot of that shading is gone. It's essentially gone. You can see some slightly darker spots, but yeah. Yeah, here it's, it's pre here's where it was almost a seven. So yeah, two seconds to dry. There is some wooliness, there is feathering. So that's unfortunate. But the color is still such a lovely color. This really reminds me of copper that is just starting to tarnish just a little bit. But yeah, uh, this is the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. I will say that. And this ink is acting like a seven. And this is a broad crest metallic stub. And so what might have been a fair, a more fair use before, may, now maybe not so much. But if we look up here where this is the Japanese medium, that fully came through. And it's coming through in some cases, like when you think about sure, like just sheer square footage about how much goes on and how much comes through, that is much more dense. So yeah. Uh, water test is not great. It uh, dyed the page, it feathered, it exploded, but more absorbent papers do tend to draw the ink in, make it harder to wash out. So this is darker than what we've seen before, but it's also just terrible. And as you might be able to tell if I bring this in, uh, this paper actually started to act like chromatography paper. So as soon as I put the water in, I started trying to draw the water up and <laughs> sop it up fairly quickly. Now, next up is me notebook paper. It's very common for school children in the United States. And uh, this is the kind that you would find in a composition book or, you know, like a lab notebook, not the kind you'd find with the spiral binding. And uh, this stuff has a texture that's actually quite similar to newspaper or newsprint. Uh, it took one and a half seconds to dry. It's quite woolly. And we do get some spread. So, yeah, here's Tumaway River. So the line width did get a bit broader. There's really not much shading. Now, this there is a lot of this, but if you'll see, it's actually still pretty hazy. It's nowhere near as dark as the writing on you know the other side, so it didn't actually come through anywhere. And as you can see, the medium just as much. Uh, this paper does tend to freak out when you add water, and it kind of did. Um, granted, my crappy cursive is pretty crappy in the first place, so. Uh, but it's, it really dyed the page. It's sort of just, I mean, it was bad. Um, that would not be fun to try and recover. Yeah, so maybe don't recommend it for using in your lab notebook. Now here's moleskin notebook paper, which is terrible. It's, it's terribly made. It, it's very poorly constructed. It's bad. They make you pay a lot of money for it. Moleskin is my nemesis. I make no excuses. I make no apologies. Look at this scrubby. You can see the pulp, the text, the size and everything of the pulp they mashed into a paper. And look at this feathering. Now, yes, this is a broad crystal metallic stub. And yes, this is, you know, a fairly wet ink at this point, but this is me. This is like writing on newspaper. See the two? See, I mean, this is not great, but this is just terrible. It's just terrible. Look at how awful that looks. Ugh, it took three seconds to dry, and here it bled onto the page below. See how dark all these spots are? That bled onto the page below. It was getting everywhere. Like, here, you know, like, blah, 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 blah. blah. Oh, it's rendered onto the page below now. <laughs> like, I was just losing it. I lost all patience. Look at this. Look at this water test. This is insane. I hate this paper. And look, this is what I mean by when it starts to act like chromatography paper. Here. So this was where I put the drop of ink in the scribby, in the scribbly and sopped it up. But even after I tried to sop it up, it still kept trying to grow. Same here. Ugh. God. I hate, I hate ending on moleskin because it always puts me in such a bad mood. But anyways, uh, yeah, there you go for your consideration from the Chippewa Network. Toucan Sienna, a beautiful color. Um, it is coppery, it is orangey, it is brown. It, it really reminds me of terracotta. Uh, and I love Diamine's terracotta. Uh, I ended up 
waiting until I was all out of Diamine Terracotta in my Pelican M200, and then I think I put like the, some of the sample from this in there once that was done, and yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, if I didn't already like commit all of my money to buying more samples, not that I have any more money right now, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to get some of this stuff. This stuff is beautiful. Uh, yeah, so there you go. For your consideration from the Triple N Network. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.